All right, what's up, guys? It is October 2nd. It is currently 2.25 p.m., so the markets are still live. Today, I only traded uh, TVIX, which, has, it, which is an inverse ETF. Uh, it basically does the exact opposite of the SPY, or the S&P 500. So if you can see here, the chart goes up, 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 up. SPY is down, 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 down. Now SPY is turning around, going back up. TVIX is turn around and come back down. Literally does the opposite. So, if you can predict what the SPY is going to do, you can trade TVIX. Now you might be like, why would I want to do that? Why wouldn't I just trade SPY? Well, SPY is $288 a share, whereas TVIX was trading at $15.50 a share this morning. So your percentage gain is way bigger than it would be if you just traded the SPY. Now, why did I decide to trade it today? Well, if you look at the daily chart, the SPY has not had a very good past two days. Now, I'm kind of mad at myself because I wanted to swing a thousand shares of TVIX overnight last night. I was like, nah, better not because the SPY has, you know, it gaps up a lot, even after bad days. But last night it got down. So it would have been awesome for me, but I didn't do it big deal. I still finished the day up $520. I was up $600, but I took a trade about 30 minutes ago. Um, just hoping to get a little bit more money. Didn't work out. Lost a little. The SPY is bouncing back a little right now, so the TVIX is falling. So I did lose about $80, and that's with commissions, so really only about $60. Uh, but anyways, let's go over the trades I did make. I'm very happy with walking away in the positive with $520. Um, now, I didn't make a video yesterday, and I don't think I made one Friday. I did reset my account back up to $30,000. Um, September was terrible. Uh, that's one of the excuses I've got. The other excuse I've got is I'm making these videos, and I'm putting them out there. I'm trying to be honest and show everybody what I'm doing, every single trade. It kind of makes me nervous because I'm like, well, i got to make money to prove that I know what I'm doing. So it makes me nervous, obviously. I mean, somebody might watch this video and think, wow, this kid's an idiot. He don't know what he's doing. I'm not really a kid. I'm 32, but I still act like a kid. So, But anyways, we'll go over the trades today I did make on TVIX here and how I ended up uh, with $520. So I bought... I bought in a thousand shares here on the uh, with 580. I wanted to make sure the S and P 500 or the SPY was going to continue to fall because it, it did gap down, and I was thinking, well, you know, it got down. Some people could think, well, you know, I'm getting in at a decent price. Go ahead and buy it up, but it did just continue to fall right at the open, as you can see here. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna jump in a thousand shares, see what happens. Uh, I sold half up here at 1591. I was feeling good. It came, but it started to come back down. I went ahead and locked in the other half just to make sure I was in the green. I was only up like 60 bucks on that trade. Uh, I did jump in another thousand shares higher at 1596 or 1594, really is where I got filled. And then I added another thousand shares down here at 1583, and I held those for a couple minutes, and then finally got out at 1581. I just I wanted to wait for it to. to turn around come back up uh, let's see I think I jumped in here oh I bought some shares here at 1581 where did I get out 15 okay so I got out at 1581 and then I got back in at 1581 and then I bought some more down here at 1573 got filled right at the, the bottom of that candle and then it started to come back strong so I just let it play out for a little bit um, sold half here at 1597 and then I decided to sell half as soon as the, the bid got on 16. Um, that trade actually made me quite a bit of money. I don't remember specifics, but uh, basically I was trying to get out and locked up because I had a, a, a meeting with my son and um, a counselor or doctor or whatever. So she was showing up at 10. I wanted to make sure everything was good and ready for her. Uh, then she left about 10, 25, something. Jumped back on the computer. Seeing it was doing good, it was curling back up, S&P, you know, SPY was falling. So I jumped in, let's see, where was that at? About 10.30, so 16.27, and it was just a quick scalp trade. Um, 
you know, sold half here, 1632, sold the other half at 1635, and that, right there, that trade got me up to 600 even, so I was feeling really good about that. Just now, when I got on to make this video and go over the trade, I was like, wow, the, you know, TBIX is back down in the, you know, 1620 range, figured I'd pick up a thousand shares and see, you know, if I can make a couple, maybe an extra hundred dollars. Let's see, I think, what, 16, yeah, 1648, I got in, and it started to fall, and I went, well, you know, I'll pick up another thousand down here, 1637, and maybe catch it on a bounce. I did sell half up here at 1645, which, you know, that, that made me like 50 bucks, because, you know, from the difference of these two averaging out, it was, you know, wasn't that high up, and then I ended up closing out the other half down here at 1632, uh, which made, you know, total with commissions and all it was an $80 loss on that trade so I'm gonna walk away with 520 on the day uh, I did make a few trades yesterday but I I did record it I didn't upload anything let's see where is that mm, try here so this is the recording from yesterday uh, yeah if you well I don't know if let me see. Let me close that. See if I can move this video around. All right, there we go. I'll stretch it out so it'll be bigger. I want to make sure I'm within the recording uh, software space here. All right, so I did take a video. Uh, uh, trade on VIVE yesterday. I think I, end, I locked in up $450, but after trades, uh, I did try to, you know, get in again. Lost. I think I closed at $110. With commissions and all, it was like a $30 day. Nothing to brag about. Uh, had a really busy day. I took my son to see my mom. Uh, let him run around a new farm that she had purchased. So, But, well, I'll let you watch this little video up here of me getting in making a couple trades on this. I'll fast forward a little bit. Um, you can see up here in the corner it says $130,000, but it says that until you, you get your first trade. So you, it jumped to 30000 and then, um, wow, it started to say I was in the trade before it actually said I was in the trade, which is weird. Uh, the first trade I take on it, I think I did lose a uh, like hundred and something dollars. It kind of spikes up and then comes down and curls around uh, let's see jump forward 30 seconds see okay yeah I locked in 220 in the negative change the chart around so I could watch it more flatly I can't stand the way TD Ameritrade charts sometimes are just up and down you know you pull down on this and it'll flatten them out a little bit makes them easier to watch so VIVE come out with an offering yesterday, and there was uh, insider buying. Goldman Sachs bought up a lot, and they had an offering at 673. Usually, when a, a, a company has an offering, the stock at least gets up to the offering. This one did not, uh, and that's where I ended up losing money because I got back in pretty high up because I was sitting pretty good on the stock, and I was hoping it would go up. I was looking to get out at like. 665 but I'm pretty sure it only got up to uh, like 645 so I did get back in I'm holding 2,000 shares which is at 555 which is like 11 or 12 thousand um, dollars I'm I always have two buy and sell uh, orders things because so that way I can, I can put in like 2,000 shares up here a thousand over here I can sell half you know I don't have to keep changing this So I already sold half, so I got a little bit of money locked in, and I'm sitting over here like holding my finger over the button just in case it starts to go the other direction. I can jump out, um, which I did, jumped out. So now I'm sitting down to two ten, which is what ten dollars less than what I was. Let's fast forward a little bit. So I'm waiting on this thing to pop and take off. Uh, you can see the buy volume is pretty strong, but it's you know it's still not getting over this 575 level. Really, the resistance was sitting at 580. <clears throat> so 
So I got in a little high here at 563. I should have got in down here at 550. That would have been a very good entry. But here it came up, tested 580 again. Uh, it comes back down. It has a, a lot of trouble there at the 580 mark. But once it gets over it, it's uh, it stays over pretty well for the rest of the day. Well, not for the rest of the day because it did end up coming back down. I'll pull up the chart on it here in a minute. Let's go ahead and jump forward another 30 seconds. Here it comes up, testing 580 again, pops up to 589. I went ahead and sell half. Trying to lock in some profits, at least get my PL day in the green. That way I'm sitting up a little bit. So I'm holding this other thousand shares, waiting on a good pop up. Really hoping it at least gets to six before I hop out. And remember, this trade was yesterday, so I don't remember the exact numbers where I get in and out at. Watching the time of sales, watching the uh, level two. Really, you want the, the, the ask or the bid here to get over 580 and hold, which it did, finally. Um, drops down to 583, back up to 590, 590. And really, I'm watching the level two more than anything and the time of sales. Uh, and the level two keeps going up, the, the, the bid keeps rising, so I do get back in. See, right now I'm out, I'm holding three, sitting at $310 in profit. So I'm still watching the level two. I'm waiting to see if it's going to get over six and hold over six, really, because then it's over, you know, a new whole dollar. So it gets, pops up to 610, comes back down into the 590s. Uh, I do have my finger on the buy button to buy, and it looks like just 500 shares. 592, 588, 587. Really, this would have been a good time to buy like a little dip because 580 is support now. But I really wanted more confirmation on you know how on the strength rising back up, so you can see. Quite a bit of volume here on the selling. Top forward 30 seconds here. All right, so I put out a bid to buy a thousand shares. 597. Hop forward. All right, so we're at, got the six dollars on the bid now. Six of three, it's rising. It's now it's really coming in, which the volume starts coming in. Up 570, 560, 540, 450. I don't know why I'm saying 540, it's 450. Okay, so here I locked in at 450, and I was pretty much done for the day. I wanted to be, anyways. Uh, and then it just kept going up. Oh man. And that's, let me, let me rewind here. So we're sitting here at 6.01. Why didn't I sell at 6.20 when I was up $500? Whew. Anyways. And FOMO. FOMO, I have a really bad problem with it because I'm a, I'm a new trader trying to hone in skills and perfect handling my emotions FOMO is really hard to get over because if you remember when I was in this trade just a second ago when it tapped 620 I was up $500 so now I'm thinking I'm sitting with $450 of profit but it could have been 500 now at 635 it could have been 600 and it pops up to 640 six oh man So yeah, 6:35 it pops up to 6:40, and that's when I'm like, ugh, I have missed out on this opportunity. 6:44, and I think that's high a day if I'm not mistaken. And here I drew a line at 6 uh, 6.74, 6.73, because that's where my target is. It flushes down. Where did I get back in? Flushes down further down 
Maybe this is where I walked away. And I was looking for a U shape, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it was. It was, it was kind of setting up like a U shape here. And I remember my mentor was talking about it. Oh, it could be set up a U shape. It could be set up a U shape. And he was going to put an order down here at 580. And then at the last second, he's like, well, I'm going to cancel that order because every stock that has done this in the past couple weeks have failed. They've gapped up. Pre-market looks good. Goes up a little bit during the day. People take their profits, and then the rest of the day it falls. Uh, as you can see, I'm holding 500 shares now at 611. So like right in this range here. Uh, I get filled another 500. Now my average price is 608, which is about right where it's at. Should have sold here, but I'm waiting on that U shape to play out. And if I'm not mistaken, this is where it flushes down. We'll just let this play out for a second. Put out an order to sell up there at 518, 520, no, 521. Does not get filled. Drops pretty hard there, and then it drops even harder. Put out a sell market order, boom. Now I'm only up $510 on the day. $18 over here after commission. So if you look over here in the corner, $30,000, $18. And that's where I walk away with $18 of profit. Today, my account's sitting at $30,317, so after this, after the commissions on the 520 I made today, we're only at 318 Starting tomorrow, though, from what I understand, TD Ameritrade is going to be offering free commissions trading, so I have to look into that. Uh, I don't know if that's going to we'll factor in on the paper trading account here. But anyways, that's my trades for today. Uh, I'll be back at it tomorrow. Hopefully we have a better day tomorrow. Uh, there wasn't really anything going on in the market today. The only thing I had on watch, let's look at TVIX right now, it's down. Oh, no, don't do that. Go ahead, and, yep, SPY's going back up. So the only penny stock we had on market today was IMRN. It uh, had a like a contract with the military, I think. Let's see what the news says here. Mm. What the hell? Funding for new research, medical research center. Maybe this is the news that we seen this morning. Yeah. So anyways, it had a very good gap up. And but it looked weak in volume pre market. I wasn't even watching it really. Uh, my mentor was watching it. He was talking about it. If it popped over three seventy, we'd have maybe an opportunity run up to four dollars. But here on the daily, what was I looking at here? I don't know. I just wasn't inter interested in it. It looked light on volume. It was choppy here in pre-market. It didn't look like a lot of people were really getting in it. This first run-up was really uh, people just buying it as soon as the news came out. Didn't look like a lot of other people were hyped for the news. And as soon as it opened, it fell. I honestly was already watching TBIX. I knew I was already going to jump in on it, so I didn't even watch it, and that was the right thing to do today because it just flushed down, didn't do anything, uh, didn't watch the high day Momo scanner, and just, uh, I did miss one trade I probably would have liked to get on, get in on, but even here in the morning it was really light in volume. This first pop up where it got halted was on that can't be right. 3,300 shares. 
3,300 shares. Yeah, I don't know. Ross Cameron from Warrior Trading said he jumped in this. I don't really understand how there's only 3,300 shares because I think he said he got in with like nine grand or 9,000 shares, but I don't know. I don't know how it all played out. I probably wouldn't have traded it because the volume was so light. But anyways, that's my trading for the day. I'll be back at it tomorrow. Thanks for watching.